Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and I'm here today on Monday, October 21st, I think. Um, I'm in a different location this time. I'm in my daughter's room, which is where I usually do my Arbitrary August videos. Um, that is because my husband needed to work from home starting like last Thursday all the way through this coming Thursday with some international conference calls so he wouldn't have to get up in the middle of the night to make it to work, <laughs> to meet, be on the call. Um, so, since he'll be home all week, I didn't want to miss my video. So, I'm up here today so we can kind of be out of each other's hair and um, voices. So, if he needs to call, he won't be on my video and I won't be bothering him. Um, so, this is my finish. It's kind of, it keeps getting washed out, but maybe throughout the time you can see it. This is Mirabilia's Mother's Bliss um, that's currently still in my daughter's room. I've had it up in my nurseries with all my babies and... This is the room that we had as a nursery for my younger two, and she still has it up on her wall. It may get switched out at some point from the Snow Queen, but we haven't quite figured out exactly how that's gonna work, because this doesn't have glass, um, but the Snow Queen does, and it's over her bed, so we don't want something with glass over her bed in case of an earthquake, because it could break and cut her. So, all that to say, I'm not sure where Snow Queen's gonna go quite yet, um, but this is currently where I'll be filming today, so buckle in. I've got a, a few things to share with you. First, I have a little bit of haul. I got an order from 123 Stitch last, the day, um, yes, did I film on Tuesday last week? I think I filmed on Tuesday. I don't even remember. Um, but the day of my last video, that afternoon, I got a package, and I knew it was coming, but I didn't want to wait to film because then I wouldn't be, um, be able to film <laughs> that late in the day with all my kids home. So, what I needed to get was Mirabilia's Garden Prelude, which is one of her newer patterns. I just love this. I love music. Her dress is gorgeous. I like the flowers in the background. And it occurred to me when um, Shelly Key X Stitch and Candace Slub Lover Stitches, when they were over at my house like a month ago now, um, I was showing them this fabric I got from Ann P of Fiber Floss and Fiction. This is a color and cotton in Wedgwood. I'm like, oh, I could do that with the, the Garden Prelude pattern. And I think it's gonna be nice. It's like a really um, mottled dusty blue, which I think will be nice um, to be like sky and stuff. The only thing I'm worried about is maybe contrasting wrongly with these light teal shades in her dress. Um, so I'll have to do a floss toss and see, because it might look better on green than blue, so I'm not sure. Um, but currently I'm kidding this up with this, and I've also bought some of the beads. I bought these three beads for it. This is leftover beads from another project. I bought the Krynik. There's one more bead that belongs to this pattern that is in, um, or that is required for the pattern that are yellow, and they're part of Villa Mirabilia, and... I don't know how many this pattern needs, but Villa Mirabilia only needs a few more, so I figured I'll just hope that I have enough in there. Um, and I'll buy more later if I need to, if I run out. So those are still in the other package. And then I also bought, I think these two beads that I needed for Winter Queen, because I still had a, these beads left. I had all this stuff already, so now Winter Queen is fully kitted with all of her stuff. And I have already started her, but, um, I knew I still needed those beads, so I went ahead and got those. And then, because I'd already bumped up past the first shipping level on 123 one, Stitch, I forget what the price point is for the first shipping level, but it had already bumped up past that into the next shipping level. So I decided, well, I'll add a piece of fabric for my letter fairies that I'm doing for my nieces. And I, then I added another one, and then I added another one, and then I added another one, and ended up getting all seven pieces of water lily linen that I'm going to use for my nieces and my daughter's um, letter fairies for their graduation presents. So now for the next 11 or 12 years, I am ready, <laughs> ready to go. So these are nice, a nice light green witch alt, which is um, a new, a nice neutral for all of these um, fairies. So now I've got all the patterns and all the fabric and I'm going to use beads and fancy floss that I already have, so that's technically fully kitted, just not, they're not put together yet. And I'll 
my plan with those, I'm currently working on letter H fairy, which I'll show you in a minute because it's for my plans for this week. Um, when I finish one, I'll start another. So I'll always have one going. With the caveat that if I finish H fairy before the end of 2019, I won't start the E fairy, which is my next one, until 2020 at some point. So, because I do want to stick to my guns and I'm not considering them um, all one whip because they're big enough. I think they're separate whips, but I will wait to start the next one until one is finished. So I'll only have one going at a time. And I think I have, I think I'll have plenty of time to work on it. This H one is due this May or June, which is my first niece is graduating this school year. Um, but then the next, I have two more. My next two nieces are two grades back, but they're on the same year. So I'll need to have them both done in two years. So I'm hoping to do like one a year and I think I'll be, um, on track for that. So that was fun haul. So I've got, um, I have another package coming in the mail today, but again, my mail doesn't usually get here until the afternoon. So I'll have to show you later, but that is regarding a collaboration that I was invited to participate in for the fat quarter shop. Um, they are a quilting store and they've recently branched out into cross stitch. So I, I know there's been some other floss tubers who have mentioned them before. Um, they have a pretty nice cross stitch section with patterns and flosses and fabrics, um, some by their own designer, but they also have patterns from other designers. Um, and so they are doing a charity stitch along starting in February 1st um, of 2020. And they asked uh, me and a, a few other people to stitch along ahead of time. And it's like a, it's not a mystery style because you can already see what it's going to be looking, look like, but the patterns will be released in parts. And so you, they wanted some of us to stitch ahead of time so that when they release each part, they'll have a few different um, examples to show you so that you see what it looks like on different fabrics with different threads, different counts. Um, I will most likely be making mine on 28 count, <laughs> one over one, because that's like my favorite for things like that. Um, I'll link below the link to their landing page if you want to check it out. They're, um, it's technically a free pattern, um, but the charity part is they're encouraging you to make a $15 donation to Make-A-Wish Foundation. And so like as payment for the pattern, but then you're also supporting a charity. So that's how that works. Um, so I will be getting my patterns um, in the mail today, but I will not let myself start that until sometime after the first, and they were okay with that. The first um, part, uh, picture part, is due, um, I think on January 25th. So I will have a little chunk of time to um, get that stitched up for the first, um, so they have it ready before they release it on February 1st. So. Um, I'm not too worried because each part it looks fairly small, so I won't be able to start it yet, but I am excited about it. I think it's really cute and it'll be fun to do, so hopefully some of you will get on board and we can share our progress together. I'm sure they have hashtags and things for that, so when I figure that out, I'll, I'll share that with you as well. So that'll be coming today, so that'll be fun to, to look at that in more detail. Um, and one more announcement. I have a new temperature pattern that I will hopefully be um, releasing in my Etsy shop this afternoon when I upload this video. So hopefully by the time the video is um, ready to go for you, it will be in my Etsy shop. And this year I'm going to be having a temperature tree. And I'm really excited about this. I think it looks super cute. This, my printer, I fixed the yellow ink but now I think some of the pink or blue is uh, missing because <laughs> it's a little more autumnal looking than it really will be. Um, so I'm going to put a picture in here of what it actually looks like, um, what, a mo what the mock-up is, since my print is a little bit um, more, uh, uh, what do you call it, autumnal than it should be. Um, but I'm excited about this. I brought my colors here to show you. Currently I have them in a bobbin box. Um, so you can see the colors and I think they're they're muted and they are somewhat autumnal, you know, in, in things that would be maybe on an autumn tree or a spring tree. Some of these blues are maybe a little fanciful for what you would find on a tree, but um, you needed a range of colors to be able to identify the temperatures. So um, I'm really excited about it. I have 
um, chosen for my tree trunk, Cocoa Bean by Classic Color Works, which is, it's looking a little, it, it's close to that. Um, it's like a, a dark, cool, variegated brown, um, which I think will go really nicely with the somewhat warm tones that I've chosen. If you, I'm also including um, some alternates though in the pattern because I also found, if you don't like Fancy Floss, DMC 33882 is a nice close match with its um, a nice warm, warmish, coolish brown that's dark. I don't know. I, I liked it. However, this color comes with the special new colors that came out a year or two ago that are in this special pack, and I don't know that they're available very readily in the stores. I know that 1 through 35 DMCs came out recently. They're individually in the stores. But I'm not positive. I think these 3800 ones are still only available in the special packs, um, which you can find on Amazon, but they're not necessarily economical. If you only want one color, you'd have to buy all like 25 or whatever. So if you don't like Fancy Floss and you don't have these new colors and you don't want to get them, I also provided 38 or 3839, which is um, close. Um, it's a little darker than the other ones, but it's very close. And so it's a regular DMC color. So worst case scenario, you could use that or you can pick a Fancy Floss you already have or something. Um, so I have all of these options listed on my pattern um, for you, but I'm very excited about it. And I'm, because it's a model stitch for my shop, I'm really tempted to start it whenever I want to. However, because, um, I know I can't start the leaves until 2020, but I could work on the trunk and get it ready for the leaves. However, there are parts of my other temperature pieces that, um, like the sashing on the quilt and the baskets and clouds and the balloons that are not done yet either. So I will give myself permission to start the trunk when those portions of my other patterns are finished because I want to make sure I get those done too. Um, so that will hopefully get started a little bit before the end of the year so that January 1st comes, I have a spot to put the first um, leaf. And how this works is you start with this one um, and you follow each branch. There's 12 main branches and so you follow around, around all the leaves on each branch and that's January. Then you come up here and you go around all the leaves on that branch and that's February. And then you kind of just work your way around each branch clockwise and I give instructions in there. So. I'm excited. I'll probably stitch this on like a light blue 28 count even weave. <laughs> that's that's what I love. I had a question on my last video. Um, I have a few comments still to reply to, but my, I had a comment, what are my favorite fabrics to stitch on? And that is one of them, 28 count, one over one, for things of this nature, which are um, sampler-esque, I guess, which have white space and... Um, even some that are not. Like I do some slightly full coverage pieces on 28 count, one over one. But my larger full coverage pieces on 28 count, I usually do half stitches just because it'll go a little quicker. Um, but for things like this, I love 28 count, one over one. Um, for my fancy ladies, I like 32 count, two over two. That's my preferred for that. Either linen or even weave, whatever. I've got usually it's linen, um, but I'm not opposed to even weave. It's just in the past I've gotten like the linen at Joann's or whatever, and so that's just what I've used. Um, and 32 count wasn't available in even weave at like big box craft stores. So, um, but I think I have some kitted up to do in the future that are on even weave. So that's fine. I like both. Um, so there's a lot of things. I think I stitch on everything. <laughs> I have projects on Ada. I have projects on linen. I have projects on even weave. All different counts from. I think 14 is probably the the biggest count I have. I don't know, you know, where the stitches are biggest. And the smallest is 40 count, one over one. Um, I also have, a f I don't think it's 56, I think it's 48. I don't remember, but it shrunk because it's, um, what do you call it? Hand dyed. And so that one, I believe the stitches are around 25 count sized, but it's over two, one over two, because it's it's like the equivalent of a 50 count. So I think that's the smallest 
like fabric size I have, but the 40 count one over one are smaller stitches. So it depends on what you, um, what you're looking at there. So I have done a little bit of everything and there's, I think a time and a place for all the different kinds. So you'll see everything here. So let's dive into my stitching. Why don't we go ahead and share my other temperature pieces while we're talking about temperature pieces. You won't see my temperature garden behind me this time, but that's in my shop as well. Oh yeah. I was thinking of doing a giveaway for to support the new release of Temperature Tree. So um, in the comments, don't say giveaway, but you can tell me your favorite kind of tree, a favorite memory associated with trees, if you hate trees, I don't know. <laughs> Something I had thought of that is tree related. Um, I grew up in Oregon and something I always thought was fascinating is when we go over the Cascade Range into Eastern Oregon from the Willamette Valley, going up into the mountains from the Willamette Valley, they're all fir trees. And as soon as you crest the mountain and go back down the other side into Eastern Oregon, it's all pine trees. And there's a distinct difference Oregonians know the difference between a fir tree and a pine tree. Um, fir trees have the, the long, each branch has the little um, needles <laughs> all along the branches. And there's a variety of fir trees, but that's the main thing. They're, the needles kind of puff up all, all along the branches. A pine tree has bursts of needles. They're usually longer, but they're bursts of needles. So ponderosa pine is a classic one that, um, and they have pine cones and bursts of needles. Recently, <clears throat> this summer, we were in Lake Tahoe with my in-laws and my father-in-law showed me a cedar tree and what the difference is in that one. And we don't have those in Oregon. And so I was um, curious to find that those are also um, evergreen trees with needles, but they are, I believe they're like flat along the branches, whereas fir trees kind of stick up along the branches. So while I'm talking about this, I'm going to put in little pictures to demonstrate the differences because I found it was very interesting coming down here to California when I came to college that Californians, at least in Southern California, thought that all pine trees or all ne trees with needles were pine trees and they would call Christmas trees pine trees and that just what? No, those are fir trees. <laughs> Christmas trees are fir trees. You don't put a pine tree in your house for Christmas. And maybe some parts in the world they do, but um, the traditional Christmas tree that at least I think of is a fir tree. Um, there's like noble fir, Douglas fir, etc., etc. Um, and so it was kind of an interesting tree thing in my past of the differences between those different needle trees. So if you have an interesting story to tell or just what your favorite tree is, um, Share that in the comments and I'll enter you. I think I'll draw three names. You can either pick this one in a PDF form, so anywhere in the world is fine. If you don't care for this one, but you would prefer one of my other temperature pieces, I will offer it one of my temperature designs. So either the tree or the quilt or the temperature balloons or the garden. Here's the balloons. And then I didn't bring the garden up, but you've seen that. The, with the little flowers, either the regular or the high-low high version. Um, so you can pick one of those if you win. Um, it doesn't have to be the tree, but I'm doing it to celebrate the tree. So um, tell me something about trees in the comments and you, and I'll draw th three names. I, 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 I kind of like to do one week because then it's just done. Um, but two weeks I know is helpful for some people who are behind on floss tubes. Um, so I don't know, maybe I'll do two weeks <laughs> just to be nice. Um, so two weeks from now, which I don't even know what that is. I know uh, today's the 21st. So two weeks from now is November 4th. So somewhere around there, I'll get that to you. And that will still be plenty of time for you to be able to source what you need to start it in the new year. So um, I will share my stitching on these this week. Got some good progress. So here's my quilt. And this is what it looked like before. And here it is now. I got September finished. Woohoo! 28 count, one over one. Over one. <laughs> um, and I got 
a lot of these lows done, a, a smattering of highs, again, because I'm kind of behind once I pick a color, I just do it everywhere that I have temperatures for. So pretty happy with that coming along. I needed to do one more um, sashing in here to make sure, oh, another strip to make, because I don't like doing the blocks. When there's no sashing there first, it, it the stitches aren't quite as neat, so I need to do that next on this piece. Get another length of sashing in, and then I can go back to doing some more blocks. And then my temperature balloons were caught up again a couple times. I'm not sure what they're like now, but this is what it looked like last time. Again, I don't think I worked on this yesterday, but here they are now. And making go progress on this balloon. I also had a comment about buttons on my pieces. Um, they're not sewn on, these are needle minders. So I know um, I never used to use needle minders until floss tube because I started seeing them on people's pieces. What they are basically is two, um, there's a, this one was, did Reader Marie give me this? I think it was, um, from Rita Marie. It's got a magnet on the back. Some, sometimes they're buttons, sometimes they're little wooden pieces. Um, then there's another magnet and you put it, you sandwich your fabric in between the magnets and then your needle can be secured on here when you put it away rather than poking it through your fabric and it usually works front and back depending on the needle minder. Um, some of them I've received as gifts, some of them I've bought a few, not very many, and I have made several from, from button packs that I've um, bought at the store or my antique buttons for my grandma or my husband's grandma. So that's what that is. Those are needle minders. I don't always say what they are because a lot of them are homemade. Um, but you can find shops that make them all over. So like check Etsy and some floss tubers have um, needle minder businesses. So, lots of places to look for that. And I'll do my travel piece now too, and then I'll get in my regular stitching for the Enchanted Stitching Challenges this week and the coming week. So this is my travel piece I've been working on. Again, the picture doesn't do it justice. Mine looks a lot better, I think. This is Tea and Cakes Sal by Lakeside Needle Crafts. It's, it was a free sal. A year or two ago and I'm just now finishing it <laughs> but this is what that looked like last time and here it is now and again this is one I made myself these buttons I found at Joann's I think um, so I finished this teapot and flowers and backstitched it and I actually finished the backstitching last night at home because it was so close and I wanted to be able to show you guys all the backstitching all finished so I think that's really gorgeous one little block to go. This one says, let's drink tea. And it's like this one with, um, that went really fast because like this is just back stitching, so there's a little bit less cross stitches in here. So I think it, there's a good chance it'll be finished this coming week, which will be really fun. I mean, stuff happens that I may not have time to finish it, but that would be really cool. So that's the hope that I'll be able to finish that this week. If I do, I will probably try, I didn't bring it up, now that I'm in my daughter's room, you know. <laughs> I can't just, oh yeah, that's over here in my box of goodies. Although the Ink Circles ink circles Tapestry is what I'm considering for my travel piece when this is finished. And so, um, I will, I guess I should have showed you, because if I finish it this week, you would want to see a starting point. But that's the way it goes. I'll have to show you a picture. Um... That one I had kitted up, I showed a few weeks back in my the end of my Arbitrary August video, I believe, and um, I can put a picture in of what the final piece looks like, so you know what I'm talking about. Um, but I have it all kitted up with Victorian Motto sampler shop threads, and so everything's in the bag, ready to go. My one issue that might make it hard to be a travel piece is that it's got a multiple page pattern. Because the last few pieces I've had as travel pieces have a single sheet of a pattern that I can just, um, and this is a free pattern, so I'm not worried that you're seeing part of it, but I can just keep it inside the sheet protector and not have to take it out. Um, I take out my fabric, leave it in there. 
I can see the whole thing at a glance and be stitching and then put it back in. I don't have to get everything out, which is nice for a travel piece. So on that one, where there's page breaks, it might be tricky um, to piece it together and maybe have to take pe multiple pages out. Um, so I'm not sure. <clears throat> maybe I'll make some copies to make to help with the transitions. Um, or I might need to pick something smaller for a travel piece. So we'll see how that goes. I might run out of time here. <laughs> I have to cut this into two pieces. I'm chit-chatting an awful lot today. Okay, so my stitching for this past week, my main stitching, centered around the Enchanted Stitching Challenges Facebook group again. Um, and I've really been enjoying that. It's been fun to have like something, something outside of me to like look at to pick what I want to work on. Within that, I'm choosing from specific pieces that I want to focus on, if I can. And so um, that's always um, playing into it, but it is fun. I've pulled out other things I may not have normally pulled out because I want it to fit. And then I'm stitching um, potentially more than I might normally have because it will fit trying to get to a certain number of stitches. And something I've noticed too is I have seven days in the week and only four projects earmarked for these st stitching challenges. So I'm not assigning days to things anymore like I kind of did before. I'm more assigning these four projects for this week. So I have more fluidity for when I start and stop things. So if I get to my ending of the challenges met in the middle of my stitching time on one day, I'll take a picture and then move on to my next project within the same stitching time on that day. Other days, it'll you know take two or three days to finish something. So it's been kind of fun. All that to say, here we go. This is what I worked on this week. Um, I'll do this, that one at the end because it's in both. So, uh, there's only three here. What did I work on last week? Oh no. <laughs> I forgot to bring my Knitting Woman book up. So I'll put a picture in of what Knitting Woman um, will look like finished because I forgot to bring the pattern up here with me. I knew I'd forget something. Um, Knitting Woman I worked on because we had to work on something that was a gift. And that one is a gift for my mom. So this is what she looked like before I started working on her. And here she is now. And I'm pretty happy with what I was able to get done. Um, you'll see I worked mostly here in her red dress strap. So I think it's turning out really nice. This is 22 count, two over one half stitches. And the coverage is very um, light. You can definitely see the fabric through, but from a distance, you can't tell that, that much. So up close, um, you it's definitely streaky. And it's kind of hard to work on when I know the fabric is showing through, but I know when the whole section gets filled in and you step back, it, it does look okay. So I'm continuing on with it. Um, and I went ahead and did 100 half stitches on this, which got like a, the medium challenge met, because otherwise I would have needed to do 500 half stitches to meet the big challenge goal. And the difference between 100 and 500 for me is too much. Um, I saved this one till the end of the week to, to see what sort of time I had to, to spend on it, if I should do um, the 100 or the 500. And I went ahead and just did 100 because I didn't want to, I didn't have time to do that much more. So I went ahead and stopped and I'm really happy with how far I got and maybe a little bit more than I would have gotten on a normal month with if I wasn't trying to even hit 100. So I think that's um, a win on that one. I also worked on my antique shoe collection because we had to work on thing three different colors. I worked on mainly this boot right here because it had green and black and this little patch of purple right next to it in the ribbon. Um, some of the colors in the ribbon they look pink in the picture, but in the in the thread, it looks a lot more purple. But on the floss card, they're called fuchsia. So I went ahead and didn't stitch any more of those as 
purple colors because I didn't want to be I wanted to make sure I was st sticking with the letter the the true trueness of the challenge I guess and I was planning to maybe do the black in the border but since I realized there's black on this shoe I'd go ahead and do that so there'd be more done in the shoe have more distinction so I only got one color done of the green and 250 total stitches amongst all the different colors. We had to count with each color, how many stitches were in each color, and it all added up to 250. So this is what this looked like last time. And here it is now. And I guess the good, best lighting in here. <laughs> um, so I did um, all this light green and all this black and then a little bit of purple, and that counted for that challenge. So that's a nice start on that boot. <clears throat> this is 14 count, there we go, white Ada came with a kit and all the kit threads and I'm really kind of having fun with that. I think that's potential to come out again with first stuff because it's um, got some simple colors and blocks of color. It was really fast to work on um, so that made it nice. The other thing I was going to work on, I was considering, we had to work on something that flew but we had to stitch all our 250 challenge stitches on the thing that flew. And so originally I was hoping to use the little baby cardinals in my heirloom nativity sampler but those combined were probably 10 stitches so that wouldn't work for any sort of challenge. Not even the 30 minute one probably. Um, so I instead I decided to pull this guy out which is in the beginning and it was a kit. Um, I have a working copy from my first college roommate's aunt that I got forever ago, my freshman year of college, I think, on Thanksgiving break. Um, so I decided to work on this peacock because I had just finished cross-stitching the bird. The bird still needs to be backstitched, um, but I didn't want to do any backstitching stitches, um, even though it is also something that flies. Peacocks fly. Um, I had one comment wonder if they did, and I even wondered if they did, so I had Googled it. And I will insert a picture of what a peacock looks like when it is flying, because yes, they do fly. I was very shocked because I've never seen one fly. I've only seen them walking around. We used to, I used to live, one of my, one of the houses I lived in growing up, there was a peacock in the neighborhood and it would walk down the street. And when it called, it was very loud and obnoxious. It was crazy. So I would see it walking down the street. I'd see it, you know, with its feathers up or down. There's also at least in the past, there's also been one at the LA Zoo that will just wander around. It's not in a, um, <clears throat> in an enclosure or anything. It'll just walk around with on the main pathways with everybody. So that's kind of fun, and you'll hear it throughout the zoo calling because a very loud call. Um, but I had never realized that, that they flew, so that was interesting. They do fly. So um, this is what that looked like last time, and here it is now with 250 stitches in the peacock. And so I did, um, last time I showed, I think I'll put in a picture of my, what I did for the, um, the starting photo in Enchanted Stitches because, um, I didn't actually show this last time. So I actually had this brown color on my needle. So I finished the nest and then did this part with, um, that thread and then I took a picture and started the peacock because you had to work on the thing that flew. So I did two shades of blue and then a little bit of white and that was 250. So it doesn't quite look like a peacock yet but it is 250 on something that flies. So, And the lighting is not quite great in here. It's a little bit too washed out but um, it's what we're gonna work with today so it's, it's not too bad. I like this one too. This is 18 count um, probably antique white, Ada, not a lot of margin. I bought this on my own. This isn't kit, kit material, but I do enjoy 18 count. I have several full coverage pieces on 18 count. Um, this one is a nice one for 18 count. And again, one of my homemade button needle minders came in the same package as that other one. They had a few different flower ones. I like the lightweight ones because I do stitch in hand and so they don't weigh down my fabric. And, and they work nicely. So my last piece that I worked on for this this challenge this past week, um, what was it for? Was it for the clothing? 
It might have been. <laughs> it's been so long. Um, I worked on Villa Mirabilia. I'm not working in her clothes, but you didn't have to. I'm working in the pot. That's my goal for this year to finish the pot. Um, and so I worked on this a little bit for the challenge and a little bit um, on my own before. Did I? I know that was last week. I'm not sure. I do know. No, no, I didn't. I think I had started the challenge before my video and um, I did a little bit more to get my 250 and I did not pick it up anymore um, after that because um, I did. I just ran out of time. I was thinking of doing some more yesterday on Sunday, but I ended up finishing the back stitching on the teapot and just had a too busy of a day to do any other stitching. So this is what that looked like last time. <clears throat> and here's the pot now. So I finished the bottom little chunk here and then started filling this in with that darker uh, green color. Not the darkest because there's some over here that's really dark green. Um, but that's Villa Mirabilia. And um, yeah, so she is actually going to come out again this week because we need to stitch on something that will protect my home from Jack delivering presents. Um, like in the Nightmare Before Christmas, which is what October's themes are all about. So I'm going to surround my house with giant planters <laughs> to keep him from coming in. Um, and I thought this, that would be a fun thing. I had to get creative this week. Some of the ones this week um, were very um, tricky to figure out what to do. So this this one is for my home protection challenge. I'm going to protect my home with giant planters. <laughs> I don't know that I'll be able to get in, but you know. Jack won't either. So that one hopefully will do another 250 up there in the bush. And then another one which is, um, what was that one for? I think to keep him, another one to keep him from delivering presents, um, like to distract him or to prevent him from doing his Christmas plans. And so this week are my week is my week to do my my middle son's piece and my niece's piece. So I wanted to fit those guys in. So I'm gonna sick my dragon on him to keep him from accomplishing his Christmas plans. Um, so I think that'll be pretty effective. I used my dragon to stop the prince in Sleeping Beauty too. So he's a he's a nice defender and attacker. <laughs> so I'm gonna work on my dragon for my son. This is the starting point on him which you would have seen last month. So I will continue working um, here in these wings and the yellow bits in the wings because that's where my son wanted me to focus last time. This is also on 28 count, um, but I'm doing two over two in most places except for the man who is one over one and that's charted. This is a Teresa Wensler kit, <clears throat> not kit, pattern. I bought my pattern on patternsonline.com as a PDF um, however, I'm not sure why, but all of her dragon patterns have been, um, taken down. So I'm not sure the reasoning there. I think you could probably still find them in magazines. Um, and I wanted to, we had to work on something that's a Halloween pattern or a spooky pattern. And if you've seen my channel for any length of time, you know I don't stitch on Halloween and spooky. Um, some things, some Halloween patterns are pretty cute. There's actually a pattern on the Fat Quarter Shop that I saw Priscilla and Chelsea show that has a little kitty and it says trick or treat. I'm like, oh, it's so cute. I, I might have to get that. <laughs> so eventually maybe I'll have a Halloween pattern, but currently I do not. Most of my patterns are flowery and sweet. So I had to do some thinking on this one. And I asked um, the admin over at Enchanted Stitching Challenges and Heather, Link is my homeboy answered me. So I decided I'm gonna stick with this. I'm this is my letter H fairy for my niece. Two two ways that this could work. H stands for Halloween, and she suggested you could dress up as a fairy for Halloween. So she's in a costume, and that's how it's Halloween-y. So I'm gonna work on this as my Halloween piece, because H is for Halloween and she's dressed up like a fairy. Um so this is my niece's piece, where it's at now. 
on the same water lily linen that I just bought a whole bunch of. <laughs> and the backlighting is not great in this location. It's a little better. Um, so this is where I'm at now. We'll see what I do. I might do more of the H, more of the greenery. I am working it from the top down, fully completing with all the beads and everything. So I'm really enjoying how this is working. Um, <clears throat> if I do beads, I only do a half stitch in my beads, so... <clears throat> but I think they might... I'll have to check. I think beads actually count as a full cross, even though they may not be attached to the full cross, because they're a little bit more complicated to, like, pick up the bead and, and thread it, you know, so it does take a little bit of time. So I think I can count beads and full crosses both um, as stitches. So 250 on this will make some good progress, so we'll see how that goes. I don't think I was doing the challenges um, last time I worked on this, so I'm, I'm excited to see what 250 looks like on this pattern. And my last one, we had to work on something that had to do with Zero, Jack's little skeleton ghost dog, um, work on a, something that reminds you of him. So a ghost, a dog, skeleton, a pumpkin, or jack-o'-lantern, um, glow-in-the-dark thread. I don't have those things. <laughs> I'm a cat person, not a dog person, but the closest thing I had to a dog is in my stitching shelf. There's actually two dogs in here. Maybe three. There's a fox. There's at least two dogs in here. So I have this golden retriever, and there's also a dog over here, but I'm not, I'm not close enough to that dog. This dog I started during Stitch Mania when I did my crazy manic extreme cross country deal. I started working on this guy. Got a got a color or two done on him. So I'll work on my golden retriever because he is a dog, so he reminds me of zero. And this is another one that I might make my goal 100 half stitches, not 500 half stitches because these are half stitches. Um, here is what this looks like now. This is on 28 count, tea dyed Monaco, probably. Um, and this is the section I'll be working on, so next time I'll just show you this picture. This is the start of the Golden Retriever. Here's his head and his body. His tail will kind of come out here. So I'll do at least 100 half stitches on, on that doggy right there. So that'll be fun. Just maybe he can uh, look a lot more like a dog <laughs> by the end of the challenge. And we'll see if I have time and I might do this at the end as well, like I did Knitting Woman. And if I have time, I can shoot for 500, but that seems, seems like a stretch, no matter which way you slice it for the time I have to stitch. So, um, that'll be fun to at least get a hundred stitches on that dog and ah, I didn't roll it tight enough. I'll have to put that back later. So I think that's everything. Um, I'll continue to work on my temperature pieces and my tea and cakes. And if that finishes, I'll start in on the tapestry by Ink Circles and those four pieces for the challenges. So that's kind of what I'm up to. Um, I've managed to last this long without having to, del to s delete stuff off the iPad. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video and re remember to comment on a tree memory or your favorite tree to be entered to win one of my temperature patterns. So um, in the meantime, have a wonderful stitchy week and hopefully see you next week. Happy stitching. Bye.